Northfield News and Views. Hello, this is Dex Rowe on behalf of the Northfield News with highlights of the 2012 Northfield Town Meeting. It is 10 a.m. and I call the 2012 annual meetings of the Town of Northfield and the Northfield School District to order. I'm Steve Jeffrey. It has been my honor and privilege to serve you as your Town and School District moderator for the last year and will continue serving until my successor is chosen, which may be as soon as Article 1 of the warnings are acted upon. Which it was. Nominate Steve Jeffrey for the positions of school and town moderator. Are there any other nominations? Any, anyone at all? Any, any, <laughs> any nominations? <laughs> Motion's been made and seconded to close nominations and to cast one ballot uh, in the name of the only <clears throat> nominee. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed, say nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. And you've elected uh, a moderator. We will now move to the school district meeting. Which began with a question from Laura Ranker. The um, letter from Justin Wrigley dated February 29th, dear parents, that was submitted by the school. It deals with the fraudulent and embezzlement, the audit. Can you just, Justin, give us an update on the status of that audit and when the letter was written at the time in December, <clears throat> there's 20 plus thousand found and now that's 60 some odd found. Do you just give an update on what's going on with that? It's a, an SU um, account that was affected, not a Northfield School District account. So it's a division between us and Roxbury on the whole. Um, as you talk about in the letter, um, at that point in December, there was 28000 recouped. At this point, there's uh, $60,983.68 that have been recouped. Uh, there is some insurance backing up this, um, not a whole amount. And we still are open on a couple of items, hoping there might be some more money returned. But at the moment, that is what has been returned. Any other discussion on the question, the pending question, to hear and act upon the report to the town school district? Morning, Jim Barra. Um, just looking back on a couple of pages here, I'm just kind of curious. Um, we're looking at scores, kneecaps. Um, in the last three years, we've seen a decline in, in grades or in, in success, and also on SATs. I'm, I'm kind of curious as to why we're seeing that drop, especially in the SAT scores, seem drastic in the last three years. It's just dropped consistently, consistently every year. Is there any reasoning for that? I'm Lori Gossens. I'm the superintendent of schools for the Washington South Supervisory Union. With regard to the kneecap scores, what you're seeing are the past. Um, several years and unfortunately last night we presented what we just learned this past February with our kneecap scores and in fact they're on the rise um, so that's the good news Excellent. but um, we have had some challenging years the elementary school's been um, designated as a school in need of technical assistance and we have been receiving a federal grant for the past two years and we have one more year with that grant to um, do some work professional development with our teachers and um, offer additional services to children. So we're seeing some nice outcomes as a result of those additional funding sources. As far as the SAT scores, um, I'm not sure that I have a good answer for you as to why we're seeing a decline on the SATs. And I, I would hesitate to, to make a guess, but I would be happy to um, get back to you and put something on our website in response to that question. Is there any further discussion? Yes, ma'am. Good morning, Andrea Melville. I'm wondering if the board could um, enlighten us about the discussions that you've been having with Montpelier High School um, since last late fall, early winter regarding um, shared services, classes, etc. There's three options. There's uh, a red, which is a regional educational district. There is um, merger being the big word, and then there's collaboration. We discussed with them about um, joining forces, about sharing resources, and really the, um, the consensus came on the fact of trying to uh, share resources, at least at this point. Uh, they're not terribly interested in uh, a merger, and I don't believe that we were um, I don't believe we went there, shall we say. But at this point, we're talking about collaboration, and um, there's been talk about sharing teaching positions. How can we improve our AP courses? How can we add offerings? Um, what do they have that we don't? What do we have that they don't? Justin Wrigley also addressed the impact on the tax rate. The residential education taxes on a $100,000 property will increase 
from $1,509 to $1,512. So a $3 increase. The school district meeting finished and town meeting resumed. Article 3, shall the town approve the reports of the town officials? Is there any discussion on the article? Mr. Morris. I'd like to uh, amend the town reports, uh, pages 100, 101, 105, and 106 uh, do not correspond uh, with uh, what we were told. This has been a relatively difficult budget cycle. And uh, the numbers that I, I speak of on those pages do not correspond with what was approved um, when the uh, select board uh, set the budget. Uh, let's see, on page 106, there's an $18,038.01 fund balance. That was not identified in the budget provided to the select board during the budget season. There is a $100,000 item that was at our last joint meeting to be pulled out of. In fact, it was a $51,500 item that was supposed to be pulled out, and now there's a $100,000 item back in there. And the budget numbers do not reflect on page 106. On the bottom of the page, under Balanced Common South Side Project, it says $27,000. $70, and it should be, uh, we, and in our budget, uh, we put in $42,893.48, and the number that should be in there, I believe, is uh, $8,580 versus the $27,000. So the motion before you is to amend the motion to approve the reports of the town officials by excluding from your approval pages 100, 101, 105 and 106. Is there further discussion on the amendment? Mr. Moderator, my name is Doug Lawson. Um, we are in a little bit of a quandary here. There's no question about that. I'd like to uh, maybe make one correction first of all. We're, we're not talking about a report. We're talking about a proposed budget, um, and, th and that's a significant difference. Um, prior to the adoption of our budget or the select board's budget, there was some concern and questions uh, regarding their attempt to influence our budget. Uh, we got a legal opinion from a gentleman named Paul Giuliani. He's in Montpelier, does a lot of um, municipal work. <clears throat> and he says in this opinion, the creation of the village highway budget is the responsibility of the trustees. There is nothing in the law that gives the town veto, approval, or concurrence powers over the village highway budget. In fact, as a matter of law, even, as the trust, even if the trustees wanted to cede that responsibility to the town, I don't believe it's possible without a charter change. We shared this opinion with the select board. Uh, they were well aware of it. We thought that they were uh, accepting that opinion and discovered at the last minute they made some changes. After the changes were made, we went back to Mr. Giuliani again and got the following opinion. When the highway budget is presented at the annual meeting, it's in the form of a unitary number. The components of which are proposed village piece and the proposed town piece. The village budget is approved by the trustees. It's then added to the town proposal. The resulting sum is what goes before the voters. In my opinion, any adjustment in the form of a reduction in the town village sum is borne by the town. Again, the question before us is to an amendment to the main motion to remove pages 100, 101, 105, and 106 from your acceptance of the report. Mr. Cleveland. This is an exercise in futility, and it is an example of what is wrong in this town and village at this time and I think this is silly, and I'm going to vote against it. Mr. Bradley, you'd like to speak on the issue? There has been one approved budget from the trustees. The record will show in the minutes that there has been one approved vote. That approved budget was modified on January 23rd with a consensus for the present trustees. That budget was agreed to by both boards. That budget is not the budget that we see I only make the statement that there are no supporting minutes that this budget, as presented in that meeting, has any vote of veracity that approved it. Michael Popowski raised a question for Charlie Morse. Can you tell me why 
these objectionable pages, my term, got in the printed budget? I can't. Well, how they get in there, I, I don't know. But on the 6th of January, there is a budget that was given to the select board. And we talked about it. And we agreed to it. And the budget that is in the town, uh, that is printed in the town report, this is this, the January 6th budget, that was approved. The budget that is in there, that is in today, that is in your town report, was not approved, and it, it, it includes it includes significant different numbers. So we are, by this article, approving the report of the town, and we are telling the people that their town report is incorrect. That's basically what it is. The voters chose to remove the pages in question. Michael Popowski brought up. Another point. On page 23 of the town reports, Mr. Moderator, third paragraph, uh, and I think that may be the elephant in this room, there is a breakdown in communication between the governing bodies of Northfield. More importantly, there's a lack of transparency between what the tax and ratepayers are being told and what the elected officials are doing. Let's let this clear the air. I assume that means let's clear the air. Mr. Chairman, I don't want to create a Hatfields and McCoys here. Uh, on the other hand, it seems that we've gotten off to a, um, an unsteady start. So I'd just like to know, what, you know what's the real story here and what can we as the voters today do about it? <laughs> the history of what has occurred between the select board and the trustees started basically in an executive session back in spring when this select board reported to the trustees that they were not going to do anything immediately regarding the buyout of the uh, former town manager. <clears throat> the next meeting, the select board opted to execute the buyout provision without any warning, and it was not on the agenda. It just happened. Whether it was right or wrong, it happened. Then we went uh, further, we, we uh, did the buyout, uh, which was part of the contract, uh, and we got wind, through a whistle uh, wind from a whistleblower that, uh, excuse me, let me just uh, re step backwards one second. By doing that, the select board basically kicked the trustees uh, in the gut because we said we were going to do something and we did something different. That's the first thing. The second thing was there was going to be a press release about the uh, whistleblowers that uh, the whistleblower that had came forth and identified some things that we had no idea were happening. We met with the trustees, went into executive session, said we'd like to work with you guys on this. We're going to have uh, a discussion about this. Uh, we're going to do a press release. We feel that it needs to be out there in the public. We're going to work with you. The next day, the Northfield News covered all the information that we had talked about with the trustees in private, and nobody knows how that information made it to the Northfield News. That's the second time that the select board kicked the trustees in the gut. Since then, the communication has gone really bad. It is affecting the, the morale of the troops, in, in fact, the employee, uh, uh, meaning the employees, and we are now in the process of doing numbers. It is the select board's job to make sure that what taxes are spent are understood, and that is why we are trying to complete accuracy with these reports. Mr. Popowski. It is my opinion that you're right. The five of you have better start acting like adults and lead this community. Uh, this is outrageous. We're spending a lot of legal fees with the village suing the town and vice versa. This has got to stop. The people in this town can't afford it. Next on the agenda, who should collect delinquent taxes? Shall the town of Northfield vote to have the town manager collect all delinquent taxes and to perform all duties conferred by law on the collector of delinquent taxes effective immediately for the purpose of having all fees so collected be paid into the treasury of the town of Northfield? Mr. Bradley. Quite frankly, we do have a new manager. That manager has a written plan for how this will be handled by existing staff. And let's be clear on what happens. The delinquent tax collector currently is in charge of collecting delinquent taxes. When that occurs, there's a penalty of 8% assessed on the taxes that are due. Not interest, an 8% penalty. Today, 
whoever is elected delinquent tax collector is able to keep the entire 8% penalty for the work they do. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Rob Lewis, and uh, I am the new town manager here in Northfield. My intent when I proposed this to the selectmen was uh, exactly that, to keep the resources of this community in the community and to not spend $20,000 if we didn't have to. That is the long and the short answer to my proposal to the select board. For the discussion, yes, ma'am. Yes, Ruth Rutenberg. Um, I'm more confused by this than I am by the discussion, frankly, about the report. This, to me, seems like a total no-brainer, that the, ta the town can accomplish a $20,000 savings. The town manager says it's possible. It's not going to be outsourced. Um, if there's an underground issue here, I wish it would surface because I can't for the life of me think of a reason why one would vote no. Motion before you is Article 4, shall the town of Northfield vote to have the town manager collect all delinquent taxes and to perform all duties conferred by law. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, please say nay. nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it and you have approved Article 4 as warned. The next two articles move through relatively quickly. Article 5. Shall the voters authorize $1,460,740 to be raised by property taxes in support of the town general fund appropriations? All those in favor of Article 5 as worded, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, please say nay. Aye. You have approved Article 5. Article 6. Shall the select board be authorized to borrow a sum not to exceed $181,250 payable over a term of up to five years to defray the cost of repairing flood damage to town property? Mr. Lewis? The $181,250 represents 12.5% of our uh, flood damage. That is the match that the town is required to come up with. It uh, was set at a time when uh, that was the only percentage we had. It does not uh, take into account hazardous mitigation grants, which we have applied for and have yet uh, to receive approval on, nor does it um, anticipate any positive legislation that would reduce that 12.5% further. So when you look at the budget, I believe you're looking at uh, the maximum number as opposed to a net number. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Any opposed, please say nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it, and you've approved Article 6. The highway budget, as expected, drew a long discussion, more than 45 minutes worth. Here are some of the highlights. Article 7, shall the voters authorize $1,299,710 to be raised by property taxes in support of highway operations? Is there discussion on the article? Make a motion to divide the article. How would you like to divide the article? I'd like to divide the article between town highway operations and village highway operations. And Mr. Morse, would you like to speak to the proposal? Yeah, basically, uh, it goes back to the uh, report. We don't know uh, what the budget is for Village Highway. Uh, we know what we were presented. Uh, we know we now see that there's been some changes, and I would like uh, the opportunity to work with the trustees so we can square this away and know what it is we need for Village Highway operate for the village budget so we can then come back to the voters and approve it. Mr. Crookshank. Yeah, John Crookshank. Was the original figure that you proposed in this in this warning article did that include the wrong page pages one through one hundred through one hundred six or or was that or or was the total figure the amount that the select board really wanted in the first place? It is related to the uh, pages that we were not familiar with. And if I could just say, Mel, I didn't find this out until yesterday as I was reading my town report. They were, the, so uh, yes, the trying to figure out what the numbers should be is what we're trying to do. And uh, does that answer your question, John? Well, so you never really had, a, pages 100 through 106, you never had a version that was correct. That, we had, we had ver yes, we did have a version that was uh, correct and voted on on the 23rd of January. However, those pages never made it into our town report. Okay. 
Uh, my name is Doug Lawson, and I'd just like to get my two cents worth in here. Um, in terms of, uh, or in response to uh, Charlie's comments that he just read it yesterday, I'm surprised about that. Uh, that has been in the hands of the select board at least since uh, January 30th. Um, the, it, it is included in the town report. The select board put the town report together. Uh, and as a matter of fact, if you look in your town report, and it's either at the beginning of the select board's highway budget or at the end of it, uh, there's a page that has got some numbers and, and so on. Uh, and I can't, re if I saw it, uh, it, it is, it very clearly tells you that the select board knowingly made this change. But they had it, the numbers. Please do not um, ascribe any uh, motives to oh, I'm, any okay. I'm, I, and I don't, I don't mean it that way. Okay. Uh, my point is that the numbers were available. The, in fact, the manager and, a, and, a, and a, one of the members brought an employee in and said, change these numbers. So certainly they were very well aware of the change. I would like to go back to what Mr. Papowski said, uh, and we need to clean up this baloney. Mr. Goslin? Um, Ken Goslin, current selectman. Uh, just a point, um, maybe we should have read it. Um, as I understood, uh, what was in the report is what we went over. I did not find out about uh, this so-called change or whatever the technical uh, term is for this until last night at 7 o'clock. Uh, I immediately said we need to have a meeting before we show up in front of everybody um, in this community that this, this has been going on, that uh, uh, this miscommunication between the select board and the trustees uh, must stop and management. And last night I get hit with this bombshell. We don't have, we didn't have, don't have time to act on it. And I, the way I understand it this morning without having a special meeting, this is why this is being done this way. Uh, maybe it is my fault and the rest of the board's fault that this wasn't uh, found. Um, I've said this right along. I continue to say this. People need to work together. We'll work together and we'll figure out what's going on. The problem is, is we don't at this time know what's going on. And that is why this is, as I understand it from the board or by the board chairman, we're looking to, to uh, break this up. Colin Bright, uh, Mr. Moder, I would move to table discussion until a future meeting after a budget has been reconciled between the two boards. Mr. Mr. Bright moves and it's been seconded to postpone indefinitely Article 7, which would mean that we would not take action on Article 7 today. And if we wanted a highway budget sometime in the future, we would have uh, be called into a special town meeting for the purposes of adopting a highway budget at that time. Mr. Moderator. Mr. Bradley. Uh, this select board has gone through 12 budget meetings trying to construct a budget that we felt comfortable in bringing to you. Part of our budget is a highway budget. Due to the vote that was done in 2008, the village portion, the village highway budget, becomes a line item in the town budget. As Mr. Adams spoke to before, in the best of all possible worlds, everybody gets along and everything's fine. We suddenly found ourselves in a situation where a project was undertaken without voter approval, that deficits that we did not have money in hand for. The village did this under what I feel is, is the best of intentions for beautifying the common portion of that cost was to bury utility lines. None of this was discussed with the select board at all. We now go into our budgets. We keep asking, when do we get a village highway budget? This is a known timeline. It's a known process. Quite literally, at the 11th, it wasn't even the 11th hour, it was 1145. We were finally given a village highway budget. January 23rd, the select board, in a joint meeting with the trustees, sat down and said, do we have a budget you can give us? 
They said yes. Here's the budget. It had a number in it for bearing utility lines. We now need to take a step back. If the voters approve of bearing utility lines, then yes, it's absolutely a valid highway expense. But that is a precedent that has not been handled in budgets before. Sidewalks, pavement, curbing, all of these are valid highway expenses. The crux of the issue is you have the village doing an improvement that affects the entire town tax rate. And the entire town had no say in this. We now have a legal opinion that says two municipalities, the government of one, cannot step on the budget of another. The select board is in the responsibility of answering to you what is in this budget of 137,000, and frankly, forgive me if I can't quote accurate numbers because they're still changing for us. January 28th, no, excuse me, yes, we got a town report. Forgive me for going reading every report in there painstakingly, but when it came to the budget, not scrutinizing every page to say, did this actually match the 12 meetings I attended that created it? Only to find out last night, when we're preparing for this meeting, that the pages have been changed. Apparently they're authorized, but there's no vote of trustees showing that they're authorized. If, if we want a simple solution, January 23rd, there was a joint meeting of both boards. January 23rd, we agreed, we asked the question, it's in the minutes, is, is this the final budget? They said yes. We said, why is there $51,500 in there for burying TDS lines? Well, that shouldn't be there. Well, if we take it out, is, will you approve it? Is that now your final budget? Yes. We operated on a budget we were given January 23rd. If you want to know why there's an $18,000 difference that was just barely referenced, look to pages 100 to 107, which we never saw. Now, I'm sorry if I'm passionate about this, but as, a, as a new, the newest selectman on this board, I'm not a deeply religious person, but when you sit down and you sign a warrant that's your money, I take it very seriously. We, we work very hard on our budget, painstakingly hard, taking it down from a, an estimated 15% when it was given to us to approximately a 3.4, 3 3.5 before the insertion of the village highway budget. And now we're given a budget that has a, too bad for you, it's $137,000. That's already been spent. Yes, which is why we're looking at Article 10. That's off topic here, and I forgive me, Mr. Moderator, but there was a budget agreed to on January 23rd. That budget removed any, there was no $100,000 in that budget for burying lines. And our fear is, quite frankly, that if it is put in the village highway budget, then we all eat it without discussion. Be just because it got put in there and it was not agreed to. I'm and what sorry. Would be the they ought, like, what else can be done? We are eating it. The money's been spent. So what can be done to well, change that? Well, there continues to be revelations. In an informational meeting just last week discussing the articles that were going to be put on this budget, the trustees let it be known that there was an entirely different funding source other than putting this on the town taxpayers, meaning the cost of burying underground lines on the common totally new to us, had never heard it before. And a decision was made, apparently, although you'll not find it in the minutes, the trustee minutes, as to whether the rate payers, the water rate payers via water bond for the West Phase water project was going to absorb this cost, which apparently they have legal interpretation they can, or this was going to be put on the, the backs of the, the town taxpayers. I'm sorry, the select board objects rather strenuously when we represent the budget and represent the numbers coming to you to have $100,000 inserted in it that we had no say in and you never had a vote on. That, that is why the bickering has ensued 
That's why we sit here being put in timeout when all we're trying to do is being fiscally responsible. Okay, motion before you is to postpone indefinitely action on Article 7. All those in favor of postponing action on Article 7 indefinitely, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, please say nay. The ayes appear to have it. And we've reached consensus on something anyway. Article 28 concerning tax collection due dates passed easily. Retiring selectman Ken Johnson was honored with a plaque for his years of service. All those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. All those opposed say nay. You've adjourned the meeting. There's always a lot to read in the Northfield News, so get a copy at your local store. Get a subscription if you don't already have one. Check us out on the Internet at thenorthfieldnews.com or check us out on Facebook, where breaking news is posted all the time. We'll see you again next week on the radio, and we'll be discussing another topic of interest to the community. So until then, for the Northfield News, I'm Dex Rowe.